Joe San, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to talk to you about a hard box from Profoto. A couple of years ago, we did a photo shoot which was covering a model with gold foil on her face, her shoulders, and one of her hands. The reason for doing this shoot was I'd been inspired from other shoots that I'd seen online, particularly with gold, but I'd never seen anyone using gold foil in the way that we used it. And then I thought about the lighting, and that was one of the important aspects of the shoot, was what sort of lighting you're going to use, this foil, this gold foil has such a reflective quality in it that a soft light wasn't going to give it the best rendition or the best outcome, you might say. So I thought about using some hard reflectors and then I came across what is known as a hard box from Profoto. You've probably seen some photo shoots done with a hard box on YouTube. But I haven't seen anyone actually doing any sort of reviewing or a demonstration on it. So this is one of the reasons why I wanted to show you this. That goes along the lines of my whole YouTube channel is about showing you product and talking about it, whereby someone else has never probably done it. Maybe it's the brand have, but individuals and independents haven't. So what I did was, when I looked at setting up the studio for the hard box, I sort of, in the back of my mind, I knew what I wanted the photograph to look like. I wanted a lot of fall off. When you look at the image, and I'll show you those images later, but the light just basically stops at the face and it falls off into blackness. I, I was thinking, how do we create this idea? You'll see in the video again how we did it, but I'll explain it for you. I created a little booth out of two V-flats, and we used the black sides, and I also used some Matthew's black panels to create the black square and we had a black background as well. So the model went into the booth and I, I do this because she had to crawl underneath into the booth and it basically just formed a black square around her and that's what we were photographing, just the square. So everything was concentrated on that square and it was also trying to stop any stray light getting into the shot as well. When I'm taking my photographs for my own portfolio or for myself as enjoyment, as I see my photography myself, I'm normally looking at imagery and what sort of photographs I'm going to be getting from those images that we're making. I'm not shooting for a customer, although sometimes we might. And when I'm shooting so more creatively, I'm looking at the type of images I'm going to achieve. What do I mean? Well, I know when I've practiced with the hard box, what sort of light it's going to give me in the position that I have it. So one of the first shots was directly at the model. When the model is front on to the hard box, she's getting all that light into her face. And it's quite evident because the face is lit up and the reflective gold foil is basically shining back at you. And then I thought, well, what about moving the box to the side? So we just do this side. And that gives another image, another photograph. And the left hand side, as I'm looking at you now, my left, that fell into darkness. And this side, the right hand side, was lit. And then we did vice versa. So we shone the light from the model's left hand side. And then when we look at the image, the right hand side of the face was in darkness. That's the third shot. And then simply after that, we did a shot from looking up. So from the bottom, we moved the, the setup, the light, and the, the hard box to the underneath side of the model, so it's shooting up her face, and then we got another image, because as the light goes up the face, the contours of the face change the quality of light going through. 
so we get another look and then we do the one from the top going down and again you get a different sort of look a more dramatic look and that's what I was looking for something more dramatic I knew from having one face on side and side that's three top and bottom that's five photographs so I was working upon having to achieve five good photos that's all I was really looking for so when I was looking to shoot I'm looking at first front on I'll take about six shots and I'll review them see if they're good enough we also had some gold contact lenses which you'll see in the photos foil over to her hairline and she, the girl had black hair the model had black hair so it fell into a good shadow and when we're taking the shots I was looking at the first six I took deciding whether that was enough to achieve for my ultimate photoshopping and because I knew what angles I wanted and what photos I wanted I wasn't taking a stack of photos I think out of the five shots that I wanted we probably achieved about maybe it's 50 shots in total 50 photos because I'd already thought about the whole setup and what we want to do and how to achieve it when it came to doing the Photoshop there wasn't a great deal to do because if you understand gold foil when it sticks to the face sometimes there's maybe a little piece to stick out and that was just taken away ever so slightly um, I wanted that gold foil look it was just to clean it up a little bit there wasn't a huge amount of Photoshop done and that was the shoot really it was quite a basic shoot in the way of you know it spent about an hour and a half putting the foil on on the model my makeup artist and then positioning the model in the photo booth I'll call it it was the light that moved and it was the light that created the different shots and the different lighting effects on the model's face I wanted to show you what you can do with a hard box and hence I wait this video today for you so now you'll probably find there's a cutaway there's a little bit of video that we've created in the background and you can watch that now there's also a link for that whole video in the description below This here is the hard box and it's actually on a D2 light at the moment you see that through the background of everything else I work in a very small space and this particular time I've got the barn doors on you can put diffusers on you have little clips to put a diffuser, colored gel, light diffuser the lights on there, the light is actually shooting up over at the moment it's shooting up from the bottom, this is how it works what we have here is a light source coming through from the hard box and then it's been controlled further by the barn doors which you've just seen I've opened up the barn doors and as you see the spread of light has considerably increased when I was shooting the barn doors were closed down quite a lot to reduce the overall spillage of the light that light there is just on a grey background at the moment so let me just show you very quickly again there's like a letterbox size light and depending which way the light is facing or which way the, the barn doors is facing then we can control the light to suit the photographs 
as a brief explanation here, you can see a very harsh light on me at the moment. And I've got my lights turned right the way down to just one stop using the Profoto D10s. And they can rate a very, as you can see on this side, this side, sorry, a very hard light and you have some hard shadows there. What I would like to say to you is you don't necessarily have to go out and buy a hard box to create hard lighting. You can use other modifiers other than a hard box to create a hard light if you wish. And that's entirely how creative you want to be with your photo or your style of photography, if that's what you like. I see so many photographers using soft boxes, and that's all very well and good, but it does get a little bit boring using soft boxes and beauty dishes for lighting. So I'm trying to give people an idea of how you could achieve another type of look, but using a hard light. And you can just simply use a cheap reflector, even the reflectors that come with some of the lights that are out there in the market space, just the basic modifier, and have a go at creating some hard light looks. I think ultimately when you're creating a hard light look, you've got to think about what the photograph is, and aesthetically does it improve the photograph when you're using the hard light. If you're doing very soft makeup or a model and she's doing a bridal shoot, or it's for a, a, a wedding, then hard light's not going to be very flattering, and it's certainly not going to be what the customer wants. But if you're doing more stylized look, then of course you can be more creative, you could use a hard light. I'm just sort of explaining my thoughts about hard lighting and how it can be used in a studio environment or even out on set. I've seen people use a hard light or a hard box, sorry, by Profoto and an external shoot outside. And I'll, I'll try and find the link for that one below. We also used what's called a Magnum reflector. We used three of them on a shoot. And that's the Paris look that we did. And again, I'll show you the link to that, that video that we did behind the scenes. And we used big Magnums. They're quite large. They do give a big punch. But that's what we wanted to try and create. There was a couple of reasons for this. A, we were on location. We had to pick a few different positions for the model to, to be shot. So walking around with big soft boxes isn't always practical, especially when it's a public area. So we wanted something that was rigid and I took no time to set up other than put it onto the light itself. And we did use B1s at the time. It made the shoot very smooth, which is what you want when you're doing a shoot. And some of the photographs I, I really like. They're some of my favorites. I hopefully you've enjoyed it. It is about hard lighting and how you can use it and how you can be creative. Thanks again for watching. See you again. Toodaloo. Bye bye. My hand's going to fall off one day.